All right, let's talk about the Second Vatican Council. What is it? Why does it affect us now? Why does it even matter? Well, that's why we're here to tell you, whether you like it or not. First, before we even look at the Second Vatican, we have to look at the First Vatican Council, 1869 years after the year of our Lord. So 1869. The meeting was called by Pope Pius IX, and the goal was to refute various contemporary ideas associated with the rise of liberalism and materialism. Tons of bishops and cardinals and other important people met in, the, in Rome, specifically the Sistine Chapel, to discuss these issues. Unfortunately, the meeting fell through, as on October 20th, 1870, the meeting was cut short by the Franco-Prussian War. What did he get done in that full year? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. So they planned to meet again, but they never really picked up until 1962. Why? Well, the world happened. After the Franco-Prussian War, World War I happened. They tried to meet again, but then Hitler and World War II happened. Thanks, Hitler. Finally, the dust settled, and Pope John XXIII shocks the world by calling the Second Vatican Council in 1959 that didn't meet until 1962. Man, the church is great at procrastinating. Anyway, the Second Vatican Council lasted from 1962 to 1965. The goal is to pick up where they left off, plus reconsider some of the church practices after the cultural changes in World War II aftermath. There were between 2,000 to 2,500 bishops that were called to the meeting, and thousands of observers, auditors, sisters, laymen, and laywomen at St. Peter's Basilica. Unfortunately, in the middle of the meeting, June 3, 1963, Pope John the Twenty Third died due to a hole in his stomach. So, by the rules of the church, the meeting was delayed until a new pope was inaugurated. Fortunately, the replacement was found quickly, as Pope Paul the Sixth became the pope on June twenty first, nineteen sixty three, and the meeting continued. On December eighth, nineteen sixty five, the Second Vatican Council was complete and ended. So, what did they do? Well, they published sixteen documents that replied to the questions on new issues in that time, such as the ones founded in the First Vatican Council. These 16 documents ultimately form most of our modern Catholic Church today. We are only going to a few of these documents because they are the most important. The first one is called the Lumen Gentium, which means Light of the Nations in Latin. It was promulgated by Pope Paul VI on November 21, 1964, and this document holds a central place among all the other documents issued by the Fathers of Vatican II. In fact, they call it the Constitution of the Church. It is that important. The Lumen Gentium has eight chapters that talk about different parts of the Church, such as the mystery of the Church, the laity, the universal call to holiness, and the Blessed Virgin Mary, which is what we've been learning in class the past month or so. Huh. That may explain why Mombini gave us this assignment. Some of the main points are that God is utterly free and his mysterious design of his wisdom and goodness created the entire universe, which basically means he chose to raise up men with him, despite our faults and sins, and he prefigured this before the world was made. The principal objective for Jesus is to carry out the will of the Father. As far as the Father is concerned, it was in Jesus Christ that it was most pleasing for him to restore all things, and Jesus indeed did just that. The next book is not as important as Lumen Gentium, but is relatable to our world today, which is a Nostra Aetate. Aetate. Aetate? Nostra Aetate. It doesn't matter. Nostra Aetate, which in Latin means in our time. This document talks about our relations with non-Christian religions, or what they should be like. They allowed for Catholics to pray with other Christian denominations, and they encourage friendship with other non-Christian faiths. It also opens the door for languages besides Latin to be used during Mass. So, why was the Second Vatican Council so important to us today? Well, it is credited to shape the modern Catholic Church we see today. It was both the Council of Reform and a Council that did not continue the Catholic precedents that came before it. Other new positions concerned education, the media, and divine revelation. Unfortunately, over 50 years after this council, there is a lack of widespread awareness of council teachings and the spirit in which they are formed. With all these issues that are still going on in this world that have to do with religions, such as problems in the Middle East and, at least in the U.S., sitting or kneeling for the national anthem due to religious and racial differences, we should look back on this event, especially look up upon the Nostra Aetate, Nostra Aetate. And as Catholics, remember and acknowledge our history while putting our religion aside to make the world more unified as one nation under God, so at least for Catholics, we may be able to go to heaven. And that, my friends, is the Second Vatican Council. <laughs>